Jesus is dead. It's over. He's been crucified. He's been laid in the tomb. He's gone. Our revolutionary, the one who is supposed to be the answer to all of our problems, is no longer with us. I thought it was supposed to be different. I thought it was going to go down in such a different way. These are the thoughts of the early disciples. Jesus' followers were wondering why their hope had been destroyed. Today is Holy Saturday, the, the day after Good Friday where we recognize Jesus' death and burial, and it's the day before Easter, and, and this has historically been a day where we as the church allow the weight, the burden, the pain of the hopelessness of the world without Jesus and his resurrection. We allow the full burden of pain and sorrow and dismay to weigh heavily on our hearts, to allow our emotions to respond to the fact that Jesus actually died, that he experienced great trauma and pain on our behalf. And to, to imagine what it's like to, to be in a place of desperation, of confusion, of dismay. There were others who were ecstatic about Jesus' death. And we see that today in Matthew chapter 27, verses 62 through 66. It says, The next day on the Sabbath, the leading priests and Pharisees went to see Pilate. So they went up the food chain. They wanted to talk to the authority. 63, they told him, Sir, we remember what that deceiver once said while he was still alive. After three days, I will rise from the dead. So we request that you seal the tomb until the third day. This will prevent his disciples from coming and stealing his body and then telling everyone he was raised from the dead. If that happens, we'll be worse off than we were at first. So in the midst of the sorrow, even though they felt like they had accomplished their goal of, of killing, crucifying, burying Jesus, they wanted to make sure that nothing came of it after that. And so they asked for the tomb to be sealed. So there are some who are celebrating, and there are some, though, who were not. I can only imagine knowing that the tomb was guarded, knowing that the tomb was sealed. This is insult to injury for the disciples, and I'm sure they're wondering, why, God, why are we finding ourselves in such suffering? They didn't know what to do. I remember when I was in high school, it was my first car accident. I wasn't paying attention. I crashed into the back of this elderly woman and just destroyed her car and beat up the front of mine. I mean, it was so bad, the tow trucks had to come and haul our cars off. And I was destroyed inside. I was so upset at myself. The burden of what I had done weighed so heavily that I couldn't get it off my mind. I just found my entire demeanor had changed and I was so discouraged at what I had done. And, and I remember thinking, how am I ever going to get past this situation? I am so down right now. And I remember that I watched a movie just to try to escape from my emotions, just to try to feel better for, even if it were just for an hour and a half, if I could just sort of forget all of my sorrows. And, and I think that we sort of do this right now when we find ourselves in dismay, when we find ourselves worn out and wondering, God, what are you doing? Why am I stuck in such a horrible situation? We find ourselves drowning our sorrows with, with distractions. And yet today, on Saturday before Easter, I hope we can go distraction list for just a few minutes and allow the full weight of this moment to rest on our souls. Jesus 
crucified, in the tomb, buried, it's sealed. We don't see the way out. We don't see how God is going to restore the situation. We can't even imagine how God can prevail. We don't understand how God can win. What can we do? For now, we're called to wait, to be ready, to anticipate. We're called to trust, to hope, to rest on what we know. Jesus claimed victory, and surely he will be victorious. And so we wait. We wait for the resurrection. We wait for the celebration. We wait confidently, knowing that God wins, that he will prevail, and that he is victorious. Trinity Church, I cannot wait to celebrate Easter with you tomorrow when gathered all around the world, we celebrate collectively the resurrection of Jesus. But for now, we wait.